page 126 of your student journal. Today we're going to deal with piecewise functions. I want you to complete exploration number one with your groupies, please. Hey, can I have your attention up here, please? Yep. You may. I think I understand this. Uh, sorry. It's not too bad once you guys get past the weird notation on it. Okay. Sergi, what did you get for letter A? No? Does the graph uh, represent y as a function of x? Yes. So, Sergi, you say no? Yeah. How come? Um, okay, someone help him out. Yeah? I got uh, yes. Okay, how come yes? Someone else. Good. No repeated x's. Very good. So, yeah. therefore, it is a function. What test can you use on this? Vertical line test. Okay, please note right here how this is solid and this is open. That means this includes x equals 0. This does not include x equals 0. So, this is a function. It passes the vertical line test. Okay. Um, letter B, what is the value of x when the function, or what is the value of the function when x is 0? Mac, zero. it is zero. How can you tell? Yeah, when you go to zero for x, the graph is on zero for y. It's at zero, zero. It crosses the origin, passes through the origin. Letter C, write an equation that represents the value of when x is less than or equal to zero. So if I am following just my x-axis, that's this piece right here, and I go to x equals zero, so right here, this function, when it's less than zero, is that line. So we're focusing on this line. So what's the equation of this line? To write the equation, you need to know m and b. Tell your neighbor what m and b are. M could be two or zero. All right, time's up. Vincent, what's m? Yep, what is it? Uh, slope is not zero. So how much do you go up and how do you are you going up or down? In this line, we are not going up. So let's say we go from there to say there. Going down. One and over. One. So slope is negative one. What's b? Zero. Okay. So y equals negative one x plus zero, or y equals negative x. That is our function when it's less than zero, less than or equal to zero. When we go to greater than zero, at greater than zero, what's our slope? Zero. Zero. And what's our y-intercept? Two. That is two. So y equals, or f of x equals two. All right, if we are combining the two... We're combining the two, f of x, relax for a minute, relax for a minute. Okay, if we're combining the two, f of x equals negative x, and f of x equals two. It would cross there, though. So sometimes you got to figure out where the graph would cross. Okay, so it's still y equals two. So here, y equals two, here, y equals two, here, y equals two, and so on. Yeah, so technically there's not a y-intercept, however... If there were, it would be at 2. All right. This right here, this is what this is a piecewise function. When you graph it, it looks weird. It's kind of disjointed a bit. All right. Take a look at ex exploration number 2. I want you to work on that part with the groupies, A and B. Part A, does it represent a function? Yes. How come? Passes the vertical line test. Okay. From here. Describe the values of the function in the following intervals. First, this, you have to know how to read this. This says when x is in between negative 6 and negative 3. So if I'm looking at my graph, once again, you have to know what axis you're focusing on. You're dealing with the x-axis. 
when you're using that axis as your measuring stick, okay, you go outside quickly. Not you, you, Jason, out. Were you being a disruption right there? You weren't? You, you wasn't. Okay, then you focus up here. It's your chance to stay in class. Okay, Matt, were you being a disruption? Okay. All right, between negative six and negative three, looking on the x-axis, here to here, what is the equation of this line right here? Yeah, y equals negative two. So we just put negative two. Now notice. It's hard to tell, but all you all you have to do is follow that over to where it would hit the y-axis. It's at negative 2. So in between negative 3 and 0, that's this chunk. What what are we on on the y-axis? Zero. 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 In between 2 and 3, we're at? And here we're at 4. Okay. So, you guys, a piecewise function just says at these specific intervals on the x-axis, this is your function. Okay? All right. So, let's hear any questions there. All right. Next piece. Use two equations to describe the function represented by the graph. So, you have a function here. We're, we have two different pieces. We have this interval from here over and this interval from here over. I want you to write a function just like we did up here, okay, for this graph. Work with the group, he's there. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, you're not allowed to use an absolute value function here. If you recognize it as one, that's great. But you're going to write two functions, okay? You're going to write two equations, excuse me, to describe the function. All right. Hey, for those of you struggling on this, guys, there are two different places where this graph exists. There, it, it exists on this end, okay? And notice when I'm saying that, when I'm measuring it by the x-axis, when x is, so if we're at zero here, when x is smaller than zero, and equal to, because it has a closed dot, smaller than or equal to zero. Okay, so I've kind of worked backwards there. If x is smaller than or equal to zero, less than or equal to zero, the equation of this line right here that exists on this side of the x-axis. So, in other words, if we covered up the rest of this graph and just saw that, the equation of that line is negative 1x. Right? It has a slope of negative 1 as a y-intercept of 0. So, from there over, we get y equals negative x. All right, when x is bigger than 0, so if we go over here, on that side, the equation of that line is y equals x. Y equals x. Okay, so now we write it when x is greater than or equal to 0, y equals x. Okay, and then the way we actually write that out, we're going to combine those and say f of x instead of y, equals, and we're going to put cool brackets, and say negative x, if x is less than or equal to 0, and x, if x is greater than or equal to 0. Now that's kind of weird because you can have two different scenarios, right? Like what if it's 0? Which one do I use? Neither. Well, if I put 0 in, if I use this one, I put 0 in for x, what do I get for y? 0. 0. And I put 0 in for x here, what do I get for y? Yeah. 0. So it won't matter which one you use. x, what's your question? Okay. There you got it. All right. Very good. Take a look at your student journal, please. Go ahead and turn it to page 127. 120. No, no. 129. Thank you. 129. They're on 127. 129. All right. I want you to go ahead and take a look at the top there. That right there, this is intimidating for some people. Some of us, we're just not, we're not going to be afraid. 
All right, I want you to try number one and four with your groupie right now. Do what you think you should. Go. Number one, this says f of zero. So if I look up here where my function says f rather than g, it means I'm using this function because it's f, and it's saying x is zero. Remember, we think of it as f of x. So when we say f of zero, we're actually replacing the, the x with zero. So x is becoming zero, so which one of these apply? Is x less than or equal to 1, or is it greater than 1? Less than. So that means for this function right here, we have to take this expression, 3x minus 1. And we plug in 0 to get negative 1 as our answer. So our input is 0, our output is negative 1 which, just so you know, is an ordered pair, 0, negative 1, right? Everything comes back to a graph. Now, you don't have to write it out like this. You just put negative 1, but that's what you're actually getting. Yeah? So on this one, am I using 3x minus 1 or 1 minus 2x? So here's x. x is negative 4. Is that less than or equal to 1 or greater than 1? Less than 1. So we use 3x minus 1. 3 times negative 4 minus 1. Negative 12 minus 1 is negative 13. So once again, that would be an ordered pair. Negative 4, negative 13. Now I not asking you to do that order pair, but I'm just trying to get you in that habit right now for when we use that later on. Okay, let's try number seven. Everyone give that one a go. So we're dealing with G this time. Are we dealing with is it less than negative 3? Is it in between negative 3 and 1? Or is it greater than 1? Greater than or equal to 1. So we use negative 3x. We plug it in. We get negative 3. Everyone write the ordered pair that that would represent. Isaiah, what do you get? Uh, it would be 1, negative 3. All right, any questions? Okay, I want you to take in on this next one here. I want you to draw an xy axis just right down the middle. We are going to graph one of these. All right. So once again, you're focusing on this axis. That's your x-axis. When x is less than or equal to 0, we're graphing negative 4x. That means right here at 0, that's a point. That's our y-intercept. And then we go down 4 and over 1. But we can't put a point right there because that's on this side. We need to be on the less than side. That's over here. So we'd have to go up 4 and over to the to the left. That is the line of negative 4x. When x is greater than 0, we have to graph y is 4. So it would be an open circle right here. And y is 4 is just your straight line. All right. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, your assignment.